concept of time, um, I suppose, is a largely a philosophical question. In terms of physics, time is necessary in order to describe how things change. But that's not necessarily, I suppose, how we experience time. The idea that we experience a certain moment of time is the present, and that that moment continually goes forward, it seems to be, to some extent, uh, a, a construct of our own. Before special relativity, uh, time was thought to be an absolute concept, and it didn't matter where you were in the universe, one moment followed another in exactly the same way for everybody. Uh, but in 1905, Einstein showed that that wasn't true. The rate of passing of time is different for everybody, depending on their relative motion. If you were to fly off in a spaceship and go around Alpha Centauri at this close to the speed of light and come back, then your clock would have ticked substantially slower than mine. So you'd come back to find me a much older person than yourself. You could imagine what might happen to a future civilization who was perhaps able to construct spacecraft that could travel at close to the speed of light. Interstellar travel for that kind of, of advanced civilization would become much, much easier, not, not just because it would reduce the amount of time it took to get there, but because their clocks would tick slower as they traveled to that distant star. If you imagine a star a thousand light years away, then if you could travel at close to the speed of light, that doesn't mean it'd still take you a thousand years to get there. If you're on the spaceship, because your clock would tick slower relative to somebody on the planet that you had just left, you could actually get to that distant star in just a matter of seconds. So if, this, if light only travelled at, at 30 miles per hour, and if I, if I um, could run or cycle at close to that speed, by suddenly, by accelerating and increasing my velocity, uh, the, the rate of everybody around me's ageing would slow down. And not just their ageing, it would be everything um, around me would slow down. So if a, if a leaf fell from a tree, and I was traveling very fast or close to the speed of light, then I would see um, that leaf dropping much more slowly. Normally, the future is distinct from the past, but if you have uh, objects rotating very quickly, or if the universe itself were to rotate, for example, then the future and the past can become mixed together. They're no longer distinct objects. You could send out a radio signal and you could, in fact, end up in your own past. And you could, you could imagine situations where, because time is relative, you could, you could do things that you couldn't otherwise. For example, if you, if you wanted to develop the cure um, for a disease and you had a patient who, was, uh, who needed that cure very quickly, you could, for example, send that patient close to a black hole. And then um, when, when, they, when the cure is ready, you could pull them back from the black hole. And because their clock would slow down as they get closer and closer, um, you'd have arbitrarily large amounts of time in order to invent your cure. So if you were eating a burger as you fell into a black hole, that if I were watching you eating that burger from far away as you fell into the black hole, um, I would see you slowing down. So your every, every bite would take more and more time. I would see you eating that burger for a longer time. But for you, as you fell into the black hole, um, your personal understanding of time doesn't slow down at all. So although I see it taking longer, from my perspective, from your perspective, it would take exactly the same amount of time. So you can't, you can't prolong your enjoyment, unfortunately, by falling into a black hole. It can be a little bit unsettling to begin with, to learn that time is a relative concept. So it's, it's one of the things you, you take for granted, I suppose. Uh, like you take, take for granted that the floor is solid until you have an earthquake. I think lots of people, when they first hear that time is relative, have a kind of an insti instinctive objection, it seems, sometimes. I suppose it's because you're, you're taking away Kind of a crutch that people have used to understand their own lives and, and the universe that they live in. But in reality, being able to interpret time in the way that Einstein did, to understand time as part of the universe, and not just part of the universe, something that's responsible for, for gravity, it lets you understand the universe in a whole new way. It lets you understand your, your part in the universe in a, in a new way as well.